Hi everyone, welcome to another Composing with Labs with me, Louis. This time we'll be taking a look at our Labs modular pianos, but before we get into that I've got a few questions I need to answer. A lot of you were quite interested to find out about the equipment I was using in this room, so I'll give you a little tour of what's what. Firstly, I work at a platform desk from Output with a dot for PK88 keyboard in the tray. I've actually had to lower the keyboard tray slightly just to get it to fit in. I've got a Blackmagic dock where I put my work and my sample drives. We've also got a Korg Nano Control too, which I use for my faders, as well as an Apollo Twin, which I use as my audio interface. I use a pair of Bayer Dynamic headphones, as well as a pair of Dynaudio BM5A monitors. Also using an RE20 microphone, and the machine itself is a Mac Pro. I can't actually remember what screens I'm using, I just know that they're Samsung, I think they're 27 inch, and they're curved. And I've got them both fitted to a mount, so I can shift them around if need be. I think that's everything in terms of hardware I use, and then I use Logic Pro to compose with. Any other instruments you may see in the background are my own that I've brought in from home. I've got my lovely Willitzer here and a couple of guitars and other odds and ends knocking about. If there's any more questions or if you want to suggest what labs instrument you'd like me to focus on in the next video, do let me know down below. Now, let's get into the modular pianos. Here's a piece I wrote for the demo. I started off with a patch called Piano Heaven and I've turned the variation all the way down so we don't get any of those tingly and sparkly sounds. So if I turn the variation up, this is what it sounds like. Whereas with the variation turned all the way down, it sounds like this. It's really fun to experiment and play around with that level on all of the modular piano patches um, so you can get some really interesting sounds. So I've kind of made this patch sound closer to a real piano, or as, as close as I can, and I played a short little phrase which sounds like this. I 
and that just continues to repeat. I actually got a bit curious of what would happen if I reversed that motif. So like I've done with cymbals and other sort of percussion and other projects, I actually bounced out this motif, reversed it, and you get this sound. I've also reversed a lower C drone using the same patch, as well as some reverse and crash cymbals which you can hear about halfway into the piece. I've also got another piano heaven patch imitating the reverse motif to help give it a bit of support, as well as a pipe piano patch which has got a really nice breathy quality to it. So this is what the pipe piano sounds like. Just jumping ahead a little bit, there's a section around bars 44 to 46 where everything modulates to a C major. Now the majority of the piece is in a C minor, so to get that one phrase where the reverse motif is playing a C major, I had to count from the end how far in the C major section was. If we look here, this is where the C major section happens, and we can see that happens on the 7th to last repeat. So then I counted to the 7th repeat from the start and just changed that E flat to an E. So when I bounce that in place and reverse the audio, the C major section would happen where I wanted it to. The reason the MIDI doesn't match up with the bounce is because I extended the first note at the start, so then when I reverse the bounce, the last note would ring out for longer. So here's how that whole section sounds together, and I'll play it around the part where the tonality slightly changes so you can hear the variation. Back to the start, there's another piano heaven patch with the variation turned all the way down, and I play a little arpeggiated C minor chord. It's worth noting that I'm using a tape delay on bus 2 and a UAD Lexicon 224 reverb on bus 1. On this track and some others later in the piece, I messed around with the binaural panning and automated it to give the effect of the sound spinning around or going through your head. I've got our wonderful Labs Choir acting as a pad throughout the piece, as well as a couple of amplified cello patches coming in halfway through just to bolster some of the drone and bass parts. Speaking of bass parts, I've got a Chiff piano patch that's taking the bass role in this piece. You can see I've got the attack quite low so it has a bit more of a punch to it. This patch really beefs out the low end, especially because I'm playing octaves with it. In the first half of the piece the bass line moves in more of a rising direction, whereas in the second half it mostly plays and ends on a falling pattern. Also being introduced fairly early on in the piece is a Chiff Pipe and Artifacts patch and a Module Organ patch. The Chiff Pipe and Artifacts patch is texturally really interesting, while I've used the Module Organ patch to create these swells when I automate the modulation. I'll single these both out so you can hear the sounds they make. We've also got a tape whirly and granular whirly working together to add a bit of harmonic flavour to the first section. The granular whirly sounds a little bit like water droplets as it plays very faintly during the opening section. On the tape whirly I've got the attack turned up to about 2 seconds so each note sort of seeps in and I've also turned the tuning down an octave even though I'm playing quite a high line just so it sounds a bit more warped. If 
Finally, for the beginning half, we have a tape piano playing a really simple line using a C as a pedal point, and then sometimes jumping up to an E flat, helping to solidify the C minor quality of the music. Again, I experiment with the tuning and turn this up two octaves despite me playing it so low down on the keyboard. It cut out a lot of the low end, which is what I wanted. And in the first half, the dynamics are kind of low, so it cuts out a little high end as well. Whereas in the second half of the music, the dynamics are ramped all the way up. So you can hear a lot more of those high end frequencies and the track sticks out a little bit more. Now there's a drop before the second half, so I've automated a lot of the dynamics to come down at this point. And we have the aforementioned reverse cymbal bringing us into the second half. Taking a look at the percussion, I'm just using Lab's drums, and I've got the kick playing a very simple heartbeat style rhythm, and the snare playing on every beat of the bar. Both of these tracks have also been EQ'd to take some of the high end out. We also have a reverse hi-hat which has the binaural panning automated so the sound spins around your head. I'm going to play all of the percussion tracks together, and you'll see the little panning widgets start to spin around on the hi-hats. There's also an echoey pill guitar playing these sort of stunted chords. We've got a few more tracks replicating some of the tracks that were introduced earlier. So here we have a whirly heaven patch imitating the bass line, or there's another tank piano playing a C drone with an almost percussive quality to it. Now there's another whirly heaven patch which is also playing two different melodies at once, still retaining that fallen theme I mentioned earlier in the bass part. As well as this, we have our tape whirly track echoing the whirly heaven melody in a call and response fashion. There's also another chiff piano oscillating between third and fourth intervals. And finally, we have the fantastic granular piano that fades in playing high arpeggios that takes us to the end of the piece. I'll play you these last six tracks together so you can hear how they work. I usually like to leave a little bit of music that inspired me in the description, but there wasn't any particular sound that helped me when I was writing this demo. But I will leave you with a track uh, in the description from an artist called Panda Bear. He makes really experimental and psychedelic music and uses a lot of delays and manipulates sounds and sound effects in his production, which make for a really interesting listen. So I'll leave that in the description below. Thanks again for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to hit the like button and leave a comment. And to keep up to date with all of our new content and releases, make sure you subscribe. Also, do take a look in the description for any of the links I've mentioned, and if you want to check out some of our other demos or music on our various pages, you can do. Might give you an idea of what you want to see in the next Labs video. Anyway, have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.